This is Callan Bentley. Welcome back for another smart figure. After watching this video, you should be able to describe the relative importance and basic structural similarities of the most common group of minerals in the Earth's crust, the silicate minerals. If you look at this image, you'll see a rock that's actually one of the most common rocks in Earth. This is peridotite. It's an igneous rock that's very common in the Earth's mantle. It's made out of a mineral called olivine, mostly, with a little bit of the mineral pyroxene in it as well. Both of these minerals are silicate minerals, and so silicate minerals make up a huge portion of the mantle. They also make up a huge portion of the crust. Here's a pie chart showing the relative proportions of different elements in the crust. I'm not going to go into this in a lot of detail, but what I want to call your attention to is that the two most common elements in Earth's crust are silicon at around 28% and oxygen at around 47%. You can see that other important elements are aluminum and calcium and so on, but the key thing here is that a huge proportion of the Earth's crust is made out of either silicon or oxygen. And so you would expect minerals that are rich in silicon and oxygen to be very common minerals. Well, you'd be right. The silicate minerals, the ones that have silicon and oxygen in their chemical structure, make up about 92% of the Earth's crust. Non-silicate minerals, in contrast, make up only about 8% of the crust. If we take a look at some of the details there, we see that about half of all minerals in the crust are feldspars of one kind or another, either plagioclase feldspar or potassium feldspar. Other important silicate minerals include quartz, pyroxenes, amphiboles, micas, clays, and a grab bag of other silicates. All silicate minerals have something in common, and that is that they have silica in them. So in general, the chemical formula is SiO2 for silica, um, which shown here in these images are SiO4. Um, the reason for that is we're showing the silicon oxygen tetrahedron. And this is a really key structure in all silicates, whether or not they have lots of oxygen or relatively little oxygen. So you can see here that basically you've got a silicon atom shown in blue surrounded by oxygen atoms, which are the big red uh, atoms. Uh, a more expanded view is shown over here on the right where you can see the silicon atom in the middle, and then it's bonded to these neighboring oxygen atoms four of them in every direction. Those four atoms end up defining a four-sided face around that central silicon atom, and so it basically is like a little pyramid or a four-sided figure, a tetrahedron. The plural of tetrahedron is tetrahedra. Those tetrahedra can be linked to one another in various ways. So some of those ways are illustrated here. Um, you can see that they can be independent tetrahedra, the tetrahedra can be linked together in single chains. The tetrahedra can be linked together in double chains. The tetrahedra can be linked together in big sheet-like structures, or it can be more complicated. Let's take a look first at the independent tetrahedron situation, where you've got these little tetrahedra bonded to other atoms, uh, and these atoms are usually positive ions, like magnesium or iron. And this is the case with that green rock I showed you at the beginning. The peridotite, that, that mineral that makes up most of the peridotite, olivine, is made out of uh, a crystal structure that looks something like this. So that's up here at the top, olivine. You'll see that our single chain silicates are called pyroxenes. Um, augite is a specific example of a single chain silicate. The double chain silicates are members of the amphibole group. Hornblende is our example mineral there. The sheet silicates are biotite and muscovite. They're both examples of micas. We've seen micas in another smart figure where we talked about mineral cleavage. And then lastly, we've got the more complex three-dimensional networks. And basically, these are in two main groups, the feldspars and then quartz. The feldspars are the most common minerals in the Earth's crust. So they occupy together potassium feldspar and plagioclase feldspar. We're talking about half of the volume of the crust. It's a tremendous volume of the crust. And they come in many different varieties. Some are richer in potassium, some are richer in calcium, some are richer in sodium. But we end up uh, seeing that these minerals are very, very common in Earth's crust. 
Okay, let's see how much you remember. Here's a horn blend and an augite. What's the silicate structure of these minerals? Remember that horn blend is an example of an amphibole, and augite is an example of a pyroxene. Hopefully what you said is that horn blend is an example of a double chained silicate structure, while augite is an example of a single chained silicate structure. Okay, thanks very much for your attention. This concludes another smart figure.